Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to kick right in this. Now, remind me, do we have an hour or an hour and a half? OK. Then I'll just you know, cut out half an hour of stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Let me tell you a story. And the story actually, believe it or not, begins this morning at 5 AM. Now, I had a hard time getting boat projects done because life gets in the way. So what I decided to do was every Wednesday when I normally wake up at 5 AM and go to the gym, I wake up all the days and do that. But on Wednesday, I used to go to boxing class. And now, every Wednesday, my wife goes to the gym, and then I go to the boat. And so it was beautiful. Uh, and, and really, the sun is coming up, which is amazing. And here's my luggage as I get on the boat. And I had one specific goal for the day. And it was to, let's see if this works. It was to access and change the impeller. Now, the impeller is the part of a system that brings the raw water or the salt water up so that it cools off the engine as part of the cooling system. Now, I will share with you, I spent a majority of the morning trying to find the right tools. Okay? I was climbing in and getting and reaching. I couldn't really see. As soon as the tool doesn't work, then I go to the garage. And I literally found myself with instructions from the manufacturer, um, with my self-help book, and all of these, not even really knowing the difference or having worked with tools recently about 1 4th versus 13 millimeters and all the different stuff. So I was like literally hodgepodging together um, my ability to even work on it. And then the magic moment when I had the right tool, <laughs> out, out and amazing. So this is my victory this morning. Now, I did successfully remove the impeller, and I will share with you today, I am holding from my 1977 Cal 34 right here, a water pump minus the impeller. Thank you. Thank you. Now, why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because engines need impellers to survive. Without an impeller, without the cool water coming through the engine, the whole thing overheats and will literally stop working efficiently. Now, your unit or department needs giving day in order to not only survive, but thrive. Because at the end of the day, I sat for three hours this morning, probably two and a half, trying to find the right tool, and then finally got to where I needed. And I couldn't help but think as I got to work today, giving day is an impeller. That's it. And so today, we're going to talk about giving day the impeller that we revisit once a year. I don't change the impeller all the time, but every year I do it consistently. Now, why? Because if this goes wrong, the rest of the year is a bust until I can repair it. So, you may not have the right tools. You may not even know what to do. You may have a book. You may have the internet. You may have ChatGPT. And you're sitting here, looking down the line at Giving Day, coming up, and you're like, how do I Take this thing apart and put it back together. So today, join me on the boat as we work through something very important, which is how to build relationships. And ultimately, how to build stewardship. Now, it is cheeky, but I'm having fun with it. And if you don't have fun with the things that you do, it feels a lot more like work. So today, I'm going to focus on the one thing that I learned, which is tools matter. And I can't tell you how many times I've probably wasted more time trying to find the tools than the job itself. Does that resonate with anyone? OK. Come on in. And so I want you to think of social media as a tool. It is not a solution. There's a lot of work and scrapes to get something like this off of a boat that's hidden back inside of something that's hard to access. And social media sometimes feels like that. You're like, Where do I, what's on that? Where do I click? So you're going to leave today with specific tools. And then you just work on your engine. And, and you, you know, it's, uh, it, there, there are also some, some newer mechanics here who are micro-intern mechanics. And we're going to help give them the tools and help you as well. So I want us to think about this before I hand it over to James in just a slide away. If somebody posts in a forest and nobody sees it, does it really exist? I want you to take a real vote here. How many people think that the post that you post that no one sees actually exists? Raise your hand. How many people believe that the post that nobody sees actually does not exist? 
We're like half and half, perfect bell curve. Nothing like an educational institution to throw research and maybe like cover all ends. But this is really a pivotal question when you look at not just giving day, but social media strategy in general. And the reality is that algorithms are built to squeeze money out of you. It gives you just enough for you to feel good that people are liking and engaging, when in reality, a very small percentage of people who follow you will ever see your stuff, and a zero percentage of people who don't follow you will rarely ever see your stuff, dot, 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 unless you boost it or you pay for it, right? Social media platforms at the end of the day, they are businesses, okay? So they have new features and new tools to get your time, and then you go on the platform, and then advertisers try to get that time, and then, then, then you realize there's advertisers, and then your parents get on the platform, and then you go to the next platform, and everybody else is trying to catch up. So you're at a disadvantage in that even a hardly amount of the people that actually follow you will see you. And so when you come into it, every post that people see actually matters, because a lot of the stuff that you post, based on your opinion, does or doesn't exist. And I want to be clear here that my name is Ryan Folland and I am not representing strategic communications. I do not run the social media for the UCI main accounts. And if you would like to know more about official policy, please contact Laura Rico. If you want to connect with them about social strategy, they do amazing jobs. And they recently, anybody know about the new merger? The new merger is that UCI, basically communications and strategic communications, is now partnering with the trademarks and licensing to protect this amazing brand that we have. So be aware that these people are here to help you. And so if you do have questions, it's better to ask than to do something that maybe you know, they will email you about and have some questions for you. Disclaimer. Now my name is Ryan Fulton. I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I'm a proud ginger. For those of you who don't know, Joe, gingers are the red hair, and I'm losing my hair, my freckles, they're, they're probably turning into cancer soon, but um, it's part of my identity. And I got made fun of it as a kid, and so I've taken it back, and it's part of my strength. People who make fun of you, they just see something in you that they don't have, so they're jealous. So whoever makes fun of you, they can help you see who you really are and own it. It's my little shtick. But we are here at the Entrepreneur Center. For those watching this on the replay, um, we build ships, really entrepreneur ships and stuff like that. So if you're interested or know somebody who has an idea, this is where you send them. We help them get them plugged in. All right, the agenda for today. We're going to talk with James about priorities and goals. We're going to talk about pre-giving day, giving day, and post-giving day. That's a framework and a breakdown. Okay, so there's always new things to learn, and there's always new things, but we can look at this and break it down to small parts. Could you bring me a microphone and just make sure that it has a, a green light on it? All right, ladies and gentlemen, put it together for your fearless leader, James Yoka. Um, I'm James Yokel. I'm the Senior Director of Annual Giving here at UC Irvine, and uh, part of my responsibility is uh, overseeing Giving Day. So um, to take your metaphor forward, Ryan, I think like I'm our Giving Day tool, uh, oh. which some of my colleagues in Gift Administration really appreciate. Um, so Giving Day uh, is one of the most important philanthropic activities that occur at the university every single year. This is our eighth Giving Day. Uh, our inaugural one was in 2017. It is an annual celebration globally of UC Irvine. It's when our students, our alumni, our parents, our faculty, our staff, our community supporters come together to make a gift to the program or initiative most meaningful to them. So for the last seven years, uh, our ant eaters across the country and around the world have come together and they've uh, collectively raised over $12 million from 20,000 gifts. And those are donations that are made in support of scholarships and fellowships. They're made in support of student uh, enriching services and programs like the Entrepreneur Center or the Basic Needs Center, the Sustainability Center, the Women's Center for Success, the LGBTQ Resource Center, um, athletics programs, our UCI Health Enterprise who are working to transform healthcare and wellness. All of these amazing programs receive support on Giving Day. There's cutting edge research that occurs and is supported from gifts that come in on Giving Day. And so uh, we take it very seriously. 
uh, our community really rallies around us. Last year was our uh, strongest giving day ever. We had uh, over 3,600 gifts made uh, on the day. So uh, a lot of activity, over $2 million raised just in one day alone uh, last year. And so we're, we're really confident that this year is gonna be even greater for us. We're incredibly grateful for um, colleagues that really partner with us and support us like Ryan in the Entrepreneur Center. This is our second social media luncheon. Um, we work with him not only to kind of talk a little bit about some of the social media strategies that we can leverage in supporting all of our programs and priorities for Giving Day, but Ryan also helped launch uh, the micro internship program here at UC Irvine, and that was incredibly successful for a lot of our uh, campus partners for Giving Day last year. We're continuing that, that program this year, um, and so we're really excited about what's gonna come out from that as well. James is the tool of Giving Day, but Giving Day has created the ultimate tool, the one tool that you need, the one tool it took me all morning to find, and that's the Giving Day Marketing Toolkit. How many people are familiar with this? All right, if you're not, micro-interns, this is your place to really understand all the tools are gonna be there. So when you think about scheduling or a timeline, this is probably the first thing you wanna think about because what has a date will be accomplished. And so for those working with micro-interns, we want you to meet with the person you're patched with and make sure that you have some dates that you're clear on as far as deliverables. One of the first ones being, what is our strategy? What are we doing? What are we gonna be asking for? What are the stories that we're sharing with our communities? We talked in our last social media lunch about how ChatGPT and AI can really help to advance things. Well, guess what? Um, I used to have a slide here that said, what days and times are best to post? And so I just asked ChatGPT and it gave me a more relevant recent answer. And it kind of makes sense. People check Instagram in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. And so again, we want to make sure we're increasing the chances of posting when people will actually see it. What about LinkedIn? Same kind of thing. And I really want you to know that this doesn't just work for Giving Day. Because I was confused about the metric versus the three and a half and half and tool that I was looking for. And this morning I asked ChatGPT and it completely helped me to find that tool. So embrace the opportunity to ask the questions that you don't know directly to an AI large language model to help you get going. Now, should everything just be AI generated? No, because there might be mistakes, there might be duplication, it might not have your own actual voice. But it's a great start. It's a great way to get things started and going. How many people do not have or don't know about scheduling softwares? So everybody else has scheduling softwares, they understand how that works. All right. How many people understand and use scheduling softwares? That's a better question. Okay, nobody raised their hand at all, so let's scoot back. What is a scheduling software? The challenge about social media is that like, if you had to spend the entire day on giving day to post everything manually to all of the platforms, that's gonna be like you just saw me trying to put things together here in real time and it's gonna be stressful and feel like a weird little dance. For those of you who know, dancing is a lot like using AI, so it's okay to get out there on the dance floor. But having something that you can gather and batch all the information ahead of time, schedule it so you can schedule it and it goes out according to a good chance of when it might get in touch with people, and then use the time on giving day to actually engage with people and to comment and reply and to, and to create some conversations or dialogue so that somebody who posts about Giving Day, whether it's for you, your department, or somewhere else, that they don't, they're not left hanging. Right, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I contributed, knuckles. And it's like, silence. Just giving knuckles and giving emojis and things like that, that's more effective on the day of, and that helps your voice come across. Now, <clears throat> there are scheduling softwares, but within the actual programs you can schedule. So like, you can schedule a tweet, you can schedule a LinkedIn post. You can do these things natively, but again, you're doing it on each individual platform as opposed to having something where you can schedule them all. If you don't have a scheduling platform, they actually have 14 and 30 day trials. So you could gather all the content, sign up for the platform, use it, schedule it. As long as the trial doesn't end before or after giving day, you're okay. And then it's a matter of um, seeing how that all works, right? Get under the hood on it. Going back to the engagement drives engagement. If somebody, if somebody just sees a post and doesn't engage, or if somebody doesn't even see anything, it's just like there's no connection. And it'll just seem like a lot of sort of shouting on one end. 
I think it's important that you leverage things like uh, things within the platforms that the platforms have as shiny objects because the platforms want you to use their new tools. And, and even though Facebook Live and, and live streaming is not new, think of the business model. It helps to create something more exciting. Would you rather see something live? Yeah, because something could go wrong. And so you want to see what happens in real time. And then you watch it for seven seconds and you're uninterested and you're out. But they still got you for seven seconds. I know James is thinking about and we're possibly working on some live streaming strategies. But that would be a great opportunity to sort of stand out or plan ahead of time what you're going to be doing. Maybe you decide to go live. You have a micro intern or a student volunteer or a worker who's there. You have people to interview. You have students with testimonials. And then you go live. Now, if you don't have a bunch of people that log on initially, it still shares it further than if you were to just share a video post. Because the platforms want you to use their shiny tools because their, their shiny tools are what are keeping the platforms exciting. I think that using stories is similar to tweeting on Giving Day. You can, use, you can do it a whole bunch, right? I wouldn't say post 10 posts on your Instagram feed during the day, because that would feel a bit spammy, especially if you actually don't post regularly. And in fact, you might even get flagged if you are so aggressive, it just feels like somebody's taking over your account and, and putting a whole bunch of stuff out there. So this is why, if you think about stories on the day of, great. But the second best time to, to post a story is, is like today, <laughs> letting people know. What happens with stories, and how many people are not familiar with Instagram stories? All right, do you know who they stole it from? No, Snapchat. Yeah, so Snapchat came up with this, it dissolves in an hour, or dissolves after you see it, and then it dissolves after a day, and all these platforms saw how sticky that was, because you could be super silly and you know it would just be erased, and then now people are doing daily slices of life. What you might not understand is that when someone clicks on your story, you're telling Instagram, hey, you're interested in this. And if you notice, the next time you open up your Instagram app, there's going to be the three or four top level ones that come up. And you'd be like, oh, I wonder what they're up to today. Then you click on it. And you're just like cycling through. And then you're telling Instagram again, this is a good one, because they clicked on it. And then you're on, Insta on Instagram for two or three more days. And you pop back on, and it's in the first position. And you're like, oh, let's see what Ryan's up to on his boat again today. And you're creating this relationship, this narrative, this story over time. And you could literally just drip. Drip, drip. Hey, today we're focusing on getting ready for Giving Day, which is in X amount of days. And then working through the process that you're doing to share the work that you're putting in to share with people how cool of an opportunity this is. It's not about just getting money. It's about showcasing the stories. And why not use stories on stories? Right? A post is more permanent. Maybe a post could be a reel with a bunch of different stuff together. But think of stories as a way of keeping in touch. Now, there's Facebook stories, too. Do you notice how when you post on Instagram, it says, do you also want to post on Facebook stories? Do you know why that is? Who owns Instagram? Meta does. OK? So we want to think on our side about how to best package and let our stories be seen. And if you time it badly and just show up on Giving Day, there's a good chance you're not even going to be up here because there's been no established relationship. We can see on the center that if we post consistently a story every day, even if it's one or two slices of life, even taking posts from Instagram and sharing to your story, you can take a post, share it to your story, because we know that's where people are now. And so we see a significant increase in the number of students that see all of our stories if we post consistently. And if we stop for a couple days, it goes back to like maybe 60s or 70s. And then it gets up into the 150, and then 200. If we post regularly, we get 350 to 400 students looking at every single story, and that's every day. So no wonder when a Zotmail goes out, they recognize the name of the brand or whatever. They're like, I've been following this. I've been waiting for it. So the hardest part about on campus is you all do so many cool things, and there's so many cool things that are happening. You're like, wait, but Pi Day is coming up. By the way, Pi Day is coming up. Big party here, 3.14. Oh, wait, but there's SoCal Celebrate Science Partnership this Saturday. Yes, don't worry. It's just so, there's not a lack of things to share. It just gets stressful when it's last minute. And it kind of feels like it's getting a little last minute right now. But it's just the start. I went down to the boat this morning and came away with this. 
If you start today and meet with the person you're paired with or start to talk about your strategy, you're starting today, and then do it again and do it again. How many new timer, how many first timer giving day folks here? All right, here's my advice. Angie, will you flick on the lights? I think we're weirdly contrasted. Start. The worst thing you could do is to wait for another day, another week, another certain amount of time to start. Like, that's it. If I would have started this next week, I would have been in the same position I am today next week. And we're short on time, so it's literally that simple. Now, for a breakdown, for new participants and old, it's breaking it down to three things. So we're going to talk about pre-giving day, giving day, and then post-giving day. And that's it. Now you're working three different sort of things. A lot of people have the wrong strategy for the beginning, and it looks like a four-letter word called hope. I hope this is going to work this year. It's going to be great. We're just going to go to the social media lunch. We're going to learn. It's all going to work. Students are going to reply to my emails fast. I'm going to have a clean inbox so I can be the top of priority. There's no 911 that's going to come across my desk from any dean anytime soon. It's not like it's week nine, 10. Wait, finals? Wait, spring break? Wait, week zero? Wait, week one? Like, there is no good time to hope that something's going to work. And so you do one of two things. You either create content or you do nothing. But if you talk with James, you're not allowed to not do anything. Or at least, or at least if you're here, that's not even an option. And so we can't do this alone, and that's why recruiting ambassadors is a huge part. I'm not sure how the ambassador push has been going. Does anybody have ambassadors? Is it too late for ambassadors? We have ambassadors. If you don't have ambassadors, this is maybe a time to recruit. It could be official, which it should be, but again, it could be like, hey, we're looking for ambassadors. Do you love the services that we have here, scholarship opportunities programs? Do you want to give more money to your fellow students? Do you want to be an ambassador? Well, here's what you can do. Come hang out. Share. Let's, let's figure this out, okay? So I'm not going to read that list, but knowing how to find ambassadors sometimes starts with just asking. The problem that you might have is that students don't necessarily know about Giving Day. But all of that starts with starting the conversation. And what's so important for students about Giving Day is not that we're out there trying to panhandle and get people to give us money. It's that this university thrives off of this big ship called stewardship. Like we get a very small amount from the state, and we have to raise money, and we license the technology. But when you become alumni and you become successful and you want to give back, we want you to give back here to help the next person that's in your shoes. And so part of this effort of even connecting microinterns and getting students to be participatory in this is that they see this as something that's building for the future. And I don't know if that as a message has been like as widespread as we want it to be. And that's because students are busy and their emails are full and they've got club meetings and they've got all this stuff and they could care less and they are actually, actually I'm paying my, my tuition. So what? Right? So we want you to think about this from more of a philanthropic and like how can we support the entire university. There is an ambassador management toolkit. So again, you don't have to figure this out from scratch. We have examples and you can follow up with James and team if you know of individuals or alumni or people that want to get engaged. I just talked with somebody today and he's like, you know, how do I get involved? I'm like, well, what are you doing in a couple months? <laughs> Literally, I just met him today, just setting the seed. So tools are the theme here, and a toolkit takes all that brain damage out of it so you can actually focus on the fun stuff. How many people are aware that there is a social media directory? It's unofficial. It's not UCI Strategic Communications. I started this years ago as an effort for us to connect with each other. So I'll get this PowerPoint to you, and on this slide, there's a link that goes to a spreadsheet that has a number of micro-interns who've spent countless hours searching the web and finding people. They may be dead accounts, they may be club accounts, but at least they're UCI affiliated. And the algorithms want to promote posts that are proven to engage. So if you have a post and somebody from UCI likes it, another person from UCI likes it, and then somebody else from UCI likes it, and somebody else, that's probably four times more likely for it to get into somebody else's secondary connections. And so if we, at least low-hanging fruit, like for like, knuckle for knuckle, we create a little bit of momentum so that we can make some noise and show up in other people's feeds. And guess what? They might not donate this year, 
but they might learn about Giving Day. And then if you stay in touch with them over the next year and you share the results, not just every year, give me money on this day, it ends at the 5 p.m., but it's a continuation of your story. It's look at the impact we're having. This is what we want money for. This is what we're doing with students. This is some news. This is some results. Talk to our alumni. And now it becomes more of a relationship instead of just sort of a flash in the pan. We've got over 100 plus, and if you're not on there, then let's make sure that you're on there. All right, social media content. I mean, we could sit here for a long time and talk about it, or we could kind of cut to the chase and say, like, the basis has already been built. Because Giving Day team has put together this toolkit, which has sample tweets, and it's got sample emails, and it's got posts that are ready for you to do and distribute. Now, should you just copy and paste every single one the exact same, even with the brackets that say insert department here? OK. Please understand this is a starting point. OK. If I had somebody hand me the right set of tools this morning, I just would have saved time. It doesn't mean that my hands didn't get dirty and that I had to put in the work and go into contorted positions to get the thing off. So don't confuse. Um, tips with actually work being done. Instagram. Now, what's cool is that you, you, you have like a foundation, but please, again, don't just look at this as like, I'm just going to post the same thing that everybody else posts because that's what we all post. That, that doesn't seem like a real connection to your story. And if we ask ourselves what's easier than creating content, it's curating content. And so what are you doing from now until Giving Day to share other things? Share, I mean, who follows UCI in the news or uh, the Digest? There's so much cool stuff happening. There's so many cool things you can literally take and share. You can go to the UCI social media, find some cool stuff, and repost or redo and share so that there's some type of an engagement. And what's easier than curating content is having ChatGPT help you to curate it. ChatGPT, can you search the web for UCI articles that are relevant for scholarships that happened within the last year? I wonder what would happen if that did. Somebody want to try it? Actually, watch. Where's my, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Uh-oh. Does anybody see my phone? My phone. Hang on. I don't see it. Who has, does anybody have the ChatGPT app up? Why do I not have my phone? It's okay. We'll just do this. Is it there? Okay. We're just going to go to ChatGPT. I was asking it to come up with some slides and stuff there for this, but it didn't really work. So can you give me a um, list of articles from UCI that are relevant to, it's OK, I spelled it wrong, to um, scholarship opportunities? Uh, use your web browsing. <laughs> Uh, thanks. I just like to be nice to it sometimes, even if it's spelled <laughs> incorrectly. So let's see. It's going to think. Again, this is another tool that you can use. So yes. If someone, perhaps like a, a staff member, a faculty member, even just like a student or alum, if they don't have uh, the paid version of ChatGPT, can you talk a little bit about ZotGPT? Yeah, so ZotGPT is basically ChatGPT, but offline. And it's fed with all kinds of cool things that are related to UCI, so like a more related search. So you could use ZotGPT to search for that. Let's see, it seems there's an issue uh, accessing the web. And it, that's weird. So guess what? Nothing's perfect, everyone. <laughs> but this is what I want you to understand, is that if you don't try, you don't figure it out. And maybe there's a weird Wi-Fi connection because of all the dancing we did earlier. But image creation has never been easier, and as we saw before in our last time. And so why not use ChatGPT to come up with some fun images for a countdown? And guess what? 
you can brand these image safely with UCI because there are frames with graphics, with hashtags that the Giving Day team has put together. So you can create something that's fun and then slap a official branded frame on it to make sure that you are following the branding guidelines, right? Because we don't want to create a UCI logo from, I, I asked it to do some UCI stuff and like one of the versions was like WCI. Like it's just, it's not our brand. It can't duplicate at this point. Give it time. Anybody hear about OpenAI's new video play with Sora? Yes. Tyler Perry just canceled an $800 million build out of an executive filming studio because he saw what Sora has capacity of. And it's OpenAI's answer to video generation by prompt. So literally $800 million of building a movie studio is now done because they're getting so good with video. It's insane. Check out Sora. So what I'm saying is like, there are things constantly changing, but you can still be on brand and utilize the resources that they've given you to put onto what's happening here. <clears throat> We've got this little magic logo, and this is the magic because you can literally slap it on anything. So you slap this as it goes, and it's not a surprise. Do you know that I have a marketing friend that runs a marketing agency, and it used to be lore that it took seven impressions for a consumer to pay attention and buy. His data over years with lots of ads, it's more like 14 or 15, like to even get somebody's attention. And so if you saw this over the next 45 days as a buildup, it wouldn't be as unfamiliar when it came out the day of because I'm busy every day, so are you. So if you contact me in the morning or on social and say like, donate today, I'm like, where do I have the time? But if I know ahead of time, I can block or etch it out. So we can get our logos there as well. There's also an opportunity for people to like share support. And so maybe you can find you know, the people that have donated a few times, there's this backend data where people that are sharing and they can download and they can share. So it's about having them share because when they share, it goes into their feed that gets to a small percentage of the people that follow them. So that's technically the network effect and in pure form it's great but in reality the algorithms compress them. And if you are serious about reaching a new audience, if you've ever seen that boost post, right, you can set yourself up ahead of time to maybe even boost some posts. That means that you can calculate, I want this message to go to people within a mile radius of UCI that have certain affiliations, that have certain keywords, and then it goes into its Facebook lore and says, we have 3,222 people, and then you increase the age limit to a certain amount and raise it up for people who might have more money to, and then it goes down to 1,339 people, and then you can get that message in front of those people on a basis for maybe the amount of money that you might invest with pizza or something. Now, I'm, I'm not saying spend money to make money, I'm saying to break out of this algorithm, you have to play their game. So we all want to have this organic growth, and if, we, if it's our first time doing it, it's about building momentum and making this process so that you get better each time. The next time I take this apart, because I have the right tool and I now have a, a, a better way to access it, I'll get to it quicker next year, but I might forget. Okay, so let's talk about, now let me pause for a minute, and we're not monitoring the chat, I'm sorry, but maybe Angie, if you see any chat come up. This is all pre-giving day. And if you look at the amount of time that we've spent on it, what time is it right now? I allocated the appropriate amount of time to the importance of what is important. Because if you do all of this work pre-giving day, then guess what? Giving day should be somewhat automatic from your baseline post, and you should have fun creating real-time content in the moment, allocating time for it. And our micro-interns, you'll be aware ahead of time that that day you can meet here, we can do these different things, you can all work together, create these little power pods. And so the majority of the work is done up front. If you find yourself on giving day having not prepared, good luck, it will be a scramble. You can still get it out there, but that's why we've spent so much time on the beginning. Any questions? On a scale of zero to 10, how confident are we feeling right now? Shout it out on the count of three. There's anonymity when we all say it together. Your confidence level, even the quiet ones, you're gonna have to say it out loud, 
And on, on, on Zoom, if you want to type in the chat, it's got to be a chat bomb, which means you type it in, but you don't hit enter until I say. On the count of three, where are you at from your confidence level, from zero to 10, as of right now, one, two, three, say it out loud. Nine. We're like a f a, either a 9.5 or a 5.9. I can't, I, can't, I can't see it. But we're all like five and above, but nobody's at a 10. So let's continue and see if we can ratchet the numbers up a little bit. I am not telling you, dramatic pause while I, I'm not saying you have to give, but if I were to ask you to do something that I had not done, just purely from a mechanic standpoint, you might run into some snags that I can't help you with. You may say, it's just gonna take a minute, but it takes three minutes. Or without the right direction, it might take five minutes, which is four minutes and 30 seconds more than my bandwidth, and I'm out, I'll do it next year. So I would encourage you to, again, this is not where like you're a student, you need to come up with five bucks. This is, I kind of see what's going on here. UCI gets together every year to create a digital campaign to let people from around the world support all the amazing stuff that we have here. I like UCI. I got five on it. Let me see how this works. It's giving day. Did you guys give five bucks? No. Well, what is giving day? Well, this is what it is. If you are a director and you've never given on giving day, I would suggest you give. I give every giving day. And it's a little bit of, it's, it's, it's not a click and pay. It takes here and then information and it's, uh, by all means, it's easy. But it's, if you, it's the first time doing it, it's a little different. It's not an app that you tap. You actually log into the internet and you put in your information. And then that card or the, the way you pay, you have to recall that. It's not, you, can't, you can't just tap your smartwatch to the, to the computer, which we should try to do. So give because you want to. Ask people to give because they care. And in startup world, if you ask for advice, they might give you money. If you ask for money, guess what they give you? Mm-hmm. So if you tell people to give, there's a good chance they won't. If you share why you give, maybe they will. 10 minutes left on this Zoom meeting? That's weird. But it's the exact amount of time we need because we probably have exactly that much time left. And I really think this is important because I can give you all the strategy and tools. You have them there. But the core concept of like knowing, I'm gonna throw you under the bus, sir, because you look super sharp here, okay? Why would you give to UCI? Okay, that sounds like a very robust answer that's very fluffy, and I appreciate you saying that, but tell me what you really think. Like, like go a level deeper. I'm going to ask you why, well, the five whys in action for everyone who knows the five whys. So I love the first answer, so why? Okay, and why do you enjoy your time here? Okay, and why are those relationships with people so important to you? Okay. And why is networking for you, important for you? That's my man right there. Give him a round of applause. So it took five whys to get down to something that was really personal to you. Okay, you were like, because I want to facilitate the university, right? And then I got more and more and more narrow. But guess what? Your five bucks, if you give it to us, might help unlock $100,000 for the center this year. What? Yeah, we've got matching funds for up to $100,000 this year. Are you willing to put five bucks on it? Who here is willing to put five bucks to help us unlock 100 grand? Okay. I'm not telling you to. I'm asking you, and I'm sharing with, with, with me why that's important. So we can help somebody like him start his company. And so you take the fundraising out of it. It's storytelling. And the sooner you start telling the story, People don't realize you're telling a story. They're following your journey. And that is, at the end of the day, how we have become successful with our entrepreneurship because we build friendships and relationships and partnerships. It turns into sponsorships. And at the end of the day, it's stewardship. And so you don't have to have a boat to build a ship. You don't have to have a 1973 30 diesel Westerbeek to get the same lesson I got this morning. We're on this big ship together. And so the more we have support, the more treasure we get, the more time we get, 
then it all works. All right, now to some nitty-gritty stuff. Hashtags. Hashtags still are a thing. Yeah, for some of us, uh, think of it as the Dewey Decimal System of the future. And it is a way of searching through all this mess. If you don't have hashtag UCI giving day, you will not come up in relative related searches and you're not going to be trending on the different things. Give it up for the Sustainability Resource Center. <laughs> Follow them on Instagram. They are all about stewardship. There's the captain leaving. Thank you. But find a hashtag that maybe is your own and then latch on to the UCI giving day hashtag. What? from an engagement standpoint, is the most important use of a hashtag during the day while you are engaging. Yes? Can you search for other people who are posting for giving day? Yes! In real time, you can see everybody else's post that uses this. So then you can do a search for that hashtag, have all of the feed be put out in front of you and go, like, knuckle, flame, happy face, party, knuckle, face, money, this, that. So if you want to use it to search for it, awesome. But if nobody uses it, they can't search for you. Also, tagging people matters. Because everybody that, that you tag on the Giving Day team, they're going to see it and they're going to want to amplify it. So if what you're talking about, tag us. When you give your post, tag us. Hashtag UCI Giving Day. Happy to contribute to the at UCI Entrepreneur Center. Let's get that hundred grand in the bank because I want some of it. Okay? Then I see it and then we repost. So it's a way to be found and it's a way to find. Videos are a great way, and I know some of you are working with UCI Media to do videos. That's great. Okay? But if you don't share it, it again, like, does anybody see it? For giving day, for giving day X's. Okay? Because it's not tweets anymore, it's X's, but I'm still kind of confused with what we're supposed to say. You have the information, so put it out there. X is a platform that you can just post as many times as you want because they actually have a new algorithm. Does anybody know about it? I was listening to Elon Musk the other day with, with Lex Freeman, who's got this crazy podcast. And don't quote me on this, but they basically take everyone who you follow and everything that you post, and they correlate everything that you post using AI to match with everyone that you follow to make meaningful connections so that what you see in your post is truly relevant information for you based on what you're posting, liking, engaging with to pull specific tweets from the feed of those who you follow so that when you go on X, it's as relevant as you are active. And you know on Instagram when you hit that one photo and you're like, oh, that's cool, and then you go to your search page and you're like, oh, God. My entire search page is now based on that. It's because it's like, what do you like? Tap? Okay, what do you like? Tap. So this is a platform where you can really play and you can have fun and like not even worry about it, right? Instagram, be a little bit more protective about your feed. Get crazy with stories. Facebook, same thing. You don't want to be crazy Facebook posting, but you can use stories. And I will say you, you blank what you blank. So this is really a representation of who you are. Don't be stressed by it. Be excited about the opportunity to share with people about your program, about your culture, and about how you impact students. People have no idea what happens on campus from the outside world. If you ask them, they'll be like, oh yeah, UCI is great. But if you give them an inside view, then you help them be part of their story. Um, you've got tips. You've got more post tips. <clears throat> when using video, you know, you're all savvy enough. Use vertical. That's what everybody likes now. Make it short savvy. There's all kinds of apps that you can use. Plan it, practice it, produce it, like hit go, and then promote it. It's OK to videotape dress rehearsals, because sometimes you nail it. You spend so much time thinking about it. Like, let's just do a dress, let's just do a recorded rehearsal. Videos are amazing. Ask students to do self-facing video camera of why they love your department or why they love UCI. You could do that in 30 seconds, right? You could pitch. He's a startup dude. <clears throat> so. Photos, does everybody know about UCI Widen Collective? It's not accessible by students, but Will Nigel, Nigel has done such an amazing job with it, and you can search, and there's so much low-hanging fruit. It's all there for you. You can find stuff relevant. Um, be cautious about the way you interact, right? Like, think of this as, yes, Ruby. 
yes, you as a student have to get access through somebody who has access to it. And if you want access, you actually, if you don't have access and you want it, you actually have to email Will, and then he puts you on the list and you get access. It's like their own private Tumblr account, essentially. And again, like, it would be terrible if you just like put all this effort and then like once giving day is done, you just sort of like forget about it. And this is like, think you have the rest of the year. We have, uh, <laughs> we have a student group that was asking for advice on fundraising. And I said, well, one of the most important things is follow up. He's like, yeah. I'm like, follow up. He's like, yeah. It's awkward. He's like, what do you keep saying follow up for? I'm like, do you know if we gave you any money last year? And they went, what do you mean? I was like, you should check to see if we gave you money last year. And he did, and he's like, we did. I was like, did you follow up? So you can get money once, but you build relationships with following up. Fortune's in the follow up. So again, it's not just the day of. This is like a larger philanthropic lesson of how to engage people on a regular. Um, interacting with donors, this cuts into what we talked about, about finding things that are inspirational. Get giphy with it. Boomerang is an app that you can use, a standoff, or you can actually use it inside of Instagram and a little bit of movement and motion. Um, that is Boomerang. It's pretty straightforward. You can find it. Ask anyone under the age of 21. They'll share it with you. Um, make specific asks. right? Don't just be like, give me money. Let people know what you're getting money for and see if you can gamify it. So you reach your goal and then you celebrate it. Um, you can use polls. You can use, like in Instagram, you can ask stories. Ahead of, in stories, you can ask polls. You can ask questions. You can use different ways to engage. And you have to overcome your fear and share. If you're a department that hasn't shared in a while, I know. It's hard to get it going. Because as soon as you post, it, it, you admit to yourself and to the world that you haven't posted in a while. <laughs> but honestly, nobody else really cares. You might. But the second best day, well, the first best time to post was like 25 years ago. No, 10. There wasn't even posting back then. But the second time to plant your post is today. So. And my final final here, as we get into the final minute, is literally don't give up until you finish. And there's a lot that happens at the end of the day. Have an attitude of gratitude. Be appreciative of the people that you work with. Micro interns, this is a great opportunity for you to work with people professionally. Um, thank you videos after the fact. Um, sending emails as a follow up. Uh, giving day thank you videos. Uh, find and follow everybody who engaged with your content. Go find and follow them. Everybody with that did UCI Giving Day, even from off campus, follow them. Like, show them that you want to connect with them. Um, you could do post-it thank yous. You can do handout thank yous. You can do a lot of things like that. And then at the end of the day, we want our micro interns and everybody to look at data to see what works. If you posted 10 posts, what are the two highest posts? Why did that work? And then you can duplicate it. And then the final thing I want to say, I want to bring this back home here, because this is me excited this morning getting this. Now, it was the impeller that I was after. But what I did discover as a result of the impeller is a, this is my medical diagram here, is my x-ray, a 90% blockage with calcified salt. 95%. And so though I thought it was the impeller that I needed to fix, the lesson I learned today is that when you have regular maintenance, whether your engine or your social media engine, you might go in there trying to figure out how to post only to see that you don't have access to your password because somebody who's not an employee now has it. Or you might find out that like you, you're, you've, your account has been suspended. Or maybe you find that you're not even on an account. So the last thing I want to leave you with is that even though we're talking here about one single impeller, this Giving Day impeller is going to be something that will help you get more familiar with your engine so that you don't have to call for help, so that you can, look at a mag you can look at instructions, you can find the right tools that are around. You can ask ChatGPT for some help, and you can figure it out. And the best way to figure things out is to actually do it. So that's what I got for you today. Good luck with your impeller repair. <laughs> that is the time that we have, but if you do have questions, I can hang out, and I would really encourage if we have students here to match in person if we can. But other than that, good. Any questions on chat? Yeah. No. Thank you, everybody, for being on chat. Give it up for Angie, our real-time producer back there. But have fun with it. All right. Peace out.